Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. I am going to make another version of a tiered tray. I know I've been making tiered trays a lot lately, but I have a lot of little shelves and corners throughout my house where I just need some small trays just for some decor pieces and tiered trays are kind of fun. So anyway, um, these are going to be burner cover trays and I'm going to kind of breeze through the assembling of this till I get to the to a different part of it because I did a burner cover tray video a few videos back and I'll link that video to, in the comment section below if you want to see for sure exactly how to put a burner cover tray together but right now there's a new trend going around using clothespins and jenga blocks on them to make them look like Easter baskets so I wanted to make a couple of those because I got a ton 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 of stuff on clearance at Hobby Lobby last Easter because they had to close down for the pandemic right before Easter, like they had just put their stuff out like a week or so before they had to close down. And then they didn't open until well after Easter and everything just went straight to 90% off. So I got a little bit carried away. Actually, I got a lot of bit carried away and bought way too much stuff. So now I need spaces to display it in tiered trays, vertical storage, vertical display. It gives you more places to display things in less space. So anyway, I went to my thrift store and I found these candlesticks. They actually go this way and they're two different heights. And this is going to be an interesting set of trays for that purpose. And then I'm going to flip them over so that the heavier part is at the center where it's actually thicker up here so i'm flipping in this way they had these foam circles on the bottom to protect from scratching with the bolts and anything like that so i peeled those off because i needed a good secure place to uh, apply the glue and i'm seeing this one left a ring of foam so i'm just going to take a razor blade and attempt to clean that off before you glue a tiered tray together you want to make sure that your gluing surfaces are clean that is also why i don't paint until after i've glued everything okay so i'm starting with two sets of burner covers from the dollar tree now when they're alone they're really flimsy just like in my video that i'm going to link below um, i'm going to shore up the bottom tray with one of these uh, seven inch wooden circles from Walmart. They are 97 cents. Not going to affect the price of my project too much. I have two of those because I'm going to do two cheer trays and show you both ways that are popular right now for making the Easter basket look. So I've already marked my trays, the center of where I want it to go. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble everything before I paint it. I am going to leave, um, my clothespins natural colored some people are probably going no you don't want to do that um a lot of people have distressed them to make them look like old weather wood that's fine too um i just want mine to be a little bit different so i've traced the circle of where i need to place it and i'm going to put e6000 I'm going to put a good amount of E6000. Some people like to combine E6000 and hot glue. I do not like to do that. I used to, and I used to swear by it, but then I realized a few months later my pieces were falling apart, and I did some research on it and found other comments of people having the same thing, and what I'm seeming to understand is that if the E6000 and the hot glue mix while they're wet um, they will cancel each other out so I thought I'm not going to go to all this work of making a tray just to have it fall apart because my glues didn't play well together okay I've already measured this eyeballed it and put it together so I know where I need to glue these things to okay you need to do that, measure it, get it straight. You'll have a better looking piece if you take the time to prep it. All right, then my wooden circle, you have to take the hanger piece off. And for that, I just use a flat screwdriver 
and it doesn't come out with that I pull it out the rest of the way with my pliers and it broke <laughs> Okay. And then you're also going to have a sticker on the back you need to peel off. And in my experience, they peel off pretty easily because they're meant to be painted. Okay. And then I'm going to glue with E6000 my wooden circle onto the bottom. Oh, let's get that out of the way. Onto the bottom of my big burner cover. I'm going to make sure that I blend or get some in the middle because the purpose is to is to bind this. Um, never mind my dog there. I'm going to make sure I get plenty in the middle of my disc because the purpose of this circle is to bind it to this metal because this metal is really flimsy and these are pretty heavy. So you want it to be able to support it. So down goes my circle and I'm going to turn it over and I've already marked the circle in the middle where my other piece needs to go. Now usually I would let this set up and cure at least four or five hours but I'm going to go ahead and get this glued on. I'm going to go ahead and put my E6000 on here and I am being very generous I do not care if it oozes out it is clear it can be painted and life will go on okay so I have a nice ring around the edge there and without disturbing where I've glued it to the top I'm going to come down here and glue it to the bottom okay there's one. Pay no attention to the mess you're going to see here in a second behind you. Okay, there's the first one glued together. All right, so this has dried for a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and take some black chalk paint. This is just Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And I am going to just paint the inside base of this tray. I'm not going to worry about um, painting up the edges and all that because that's going to be covered with my clothes pins. So I'm just going to get a coat on here and then it's going to need to dry and it's probably going to need a second coat. Not going to worry about the outside edge either because it will also be covered by the clothes pins and yeah. So if I get a little up on there, that's okay. I'm not worrying about it. I just basically want the bottom edge of this tray to be coated so that it'll all tie together. I imagine I'll be having something in here like Easter grass or something like that since I'm kind of making it look like an Easter basket. But I don't know. We'll see. I just wanted it to have it finish on the inside and be kind of nice looking okay and then I'm going to do the same to the top not worrying about getting it on the edges up top if I do that's fine but not a big deal if you are going to take your uh, clothes pins and stain them or paint them you might want to paint your edges in the, the same color as your um, as your clothes pins but I plan on leaving mine natural because that's kind of the style of my house is black white and black white and wood <laughs> so having the natural color is fine and the white will actually look decent okay so I'm gonna just go ahead and let this dry you know what I'm changing my mind I'm going to go ahead and paint just the inside of here. I don't think it's going to show, but I'm just going to hit it. You do not, I don't think we have to do this part. I'm just going to do it just in case. 
I just, I don't think it's going to show enough to matter. And since I did that for the top bottom, I'm going to also do it for the top just so that they match. Now, <clears throat> on this one I'm going to be attaching clothespins and this is becoming a very popular craft on my crafting sites that I'm part of and on Facebook and I've seen it a few times on Pinterest. So you know me, I don't like to just take somebody else's idea because I don't know who is the originator of the idea so I cannot give credit to that and I've seen so many of them that I can't really give credit to any of them because I don't know who I saw first and I don't know who originated it so I'm going to take this idea and change it up a little bit because that's how I prefer to do things so once this dries it'll probably get a second coat but when it's ready to go, I will be back to show you how I'm going to make it my own. So, see you in a bit. Got two coats of black chalk paint on the trays. And now I am just brushing it with a coat of Mod Podge. Just matte finish Mod Podge. Just to seal it and keep it from scratching while I continue with the rest of the steps. I'm only going to do one coat. Just, I'll keep my brush strokes as neat as possible, but I'm not going to worry about them. Okay. This is just going to be a thin coat just to protect the paint from any bumps it might get along the way in the next couple of steps. With the Mod Podge, I do not like to rush it to dry with the heat gun. So this will just be left to dry on its own. And then, um, then we'll move on with the rest of it. Now, while I'm doing these things, I am trying my best to be very careful not to wiggle, jiggle, or disturb that glue that's still curing from the E6000 from attaching the candlesticks. Okay, I do not want to be rocking this back and forth at all twisting it or disrupting that glue bond in any way because I've already let it sit for a couple of hours I don't want to have to redo that okay so just be very gentle when you're doing this and then by the time the Mod Podge is all dry and everything's ready to go for the next step it will have had a good five or six hours to sit and I won't have to worry about it so much it takes 24 to 48 hours to cure depending on the moisture in the room and temperature and all that so just be aware that this is going to take a little bit of time and the more time you give it the less you rush it the better your end product is going to look take your time it matters okay so many people want their crafts to be done the same day they start them and some of them can be, but some of them can be, but then they might fall apart on you later. Okay, right now this looks a mess, but once that Mod Podge dries, it will dry clear and uh, it'll look nicer. And I'm not worrying about this white edge because that's going to be covered with clothespins as soon as we get to the next steps. Okay, I see that this is puddling here. I don't want that. If you get any on your candlestick, you can just wipe it off with your finger, or you can come back in a little bit and get it off with a uh, baby wipe. All right, so I'm going to let this dry naturally on its own with no assistance from the heat dryer, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I put a second coat of Mod Podge on this because I had missed some spots that didn't look as nice as I was wanting it to, and so. Uh, it's almost dry, so I'm going to go ahead and go on with the rest of it. That's what you're seeing on here is these streaks and white spots. They are the pieces or the spots where it's not quite dry on my Mod Podge, but I can move on without that. So now what I've got is a couple of packages 
of um, clothespins from the Dollar Tree. These are the full size clothespins. And to do the bottom rim, you're going to need 64 of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a little bit of hot glue along the rim. I'm up on the edge here and I'm just going to clip these on. And normally I say don't hot glue onto metal, but these don't really need to be held on. They're just being, the little bit of glue that's in there is just going to help keep the clothespins where they need to be. It's not like I'm going to be hanging anything on them or using them for structure in any way. Okay, so I'm just clipping those around on the edge. I'm going to come through and put a little more glue. I'm just putting it up on the rim. Only do a five or six inch swath at a time because you don't want it to harden completely before you get your clothespins attached. Okay, again I need 64 of these. That's what I said, yeah, 64. I think there was 36 in a package, so you need two packages. And these are the regular full-size clothespins that you can get at Walmart as well if you don't have them at your Dollar Tree. Okay. And this is what's going to form the basket for all of my Easter stuff. Some people have put a piece of foam core in the bottom to brace against the edge of the um, clothespins so that they don't slide around, but I don't see the purpose in that. Um, I just painted the bottom black so it would look nice, and I'm just going for it. They line themselves up because of the little hole that is here on the clothespin. That just kind of clips over this little rim that's on the burner cover. Okay. You could probably even do this without hot glue. I just wanted it for stability. Um, just. I don't know. I just felt like I should put it there. <laughs> I don't feel like you absolutely need to. I just did. That's all. Okay. This is starting to curl up a little bit. So I want to make sure. And putting these clothespins on kind of secures the structure a little bit. And it secures and makes the, the burner cover a little more sturdy. I am using just all-purpose hot glue. Sherbonder, I think, is the brand. You could use Gorilla Glue. That might even be a little stronger. Gorilla Hot Glue. And uh, I am getting glue strings everywhere, but I think they're going to clean up pretty easily. And I'm not fast-forwarding this. I'm just doing this in real time so that you can see just how quick and easy this is and how it's really kind of a simple way to get a really unique look. Well, I guess it's not as unique anymore because it seems like everybody's doing it, but okay, getting that basket look on there. It's going to be a little trickier here. I'm going to go ahead and go the full length of the rest of the hole. Ooh. I don't know what's on there. I'll deal with it later. I had to go hunting through my entire craft room to find enough clothespins to do this because I have been quarantined to my home for the next week. And uh, so I'm just trying to find things to do with what I've already got in my stash and not have to 
worry about it. And it is amazing to me all the different places that I found clothespins hiding in my craft room. Lots of different places. Okay, that last one kind of has to squeeze in. Well, let's see if I can get this up where you can see it. All right. Pay no attention to the mess behind you. All right, there is the first basket. Now, these are kind of leaning a little bit, kind of in a spherical shape. So if you want to set them more up, upright, now is your chance to do that. Okay. Flex them around while the glue is still soft. All right, there's my bottom basket. Not perfect, don't care, still looks good. I didn't even paint the bottom. <laughs> oh well, you know, it's just one of those things. All right, 64 clothespins from the Dollar Tree, okay? Full size ones. Then, because I didn't have enough full size clothespins, I thought, what can I do for the top? I got a package of these in the crafter square section. There's a medium sized one. There's 24 in a pack and you are going to need 74 of those. So you're going to need three packages and plus a couple. So you get four packages unless you have an open package at home. Okay. Then I'm going to do the upper lip with the smaller clothespins. Okay. I don't even think I'm going to bother hot gluing these little guys. I'm just going to clip them on. I had them clipped on earlier to do a dry run just to see if it would look okay with the two different size clothespins. And these ones actually clip, I think because they're smaller, clip a lot tighter onto the edge of this burner cover. So I don't feel like I need to hot glue the little ones on. But if you want to glue them on, you go right ahead if that makes you feel a little more uh, secure about them. Okay. I have got a lot of projects going on in this room right now and you're seeing some of them drying back behind and you're seeing a Dollar Tree haul off to the side as well that I'm trying to get up on my channel for you. I'm having some technical difficulties with it. <laughs> now I'm going to leave these clothespins natural colored because that's kind of the style of my house, black, white, and wood. and. Uh, but you could totally stain these. If you wanted to have them be it like a dark walnut brown, go ahead and stain them. Um, paint them if you want them. If you want it to be a more of a spring color and you want them pink, paint them pink. Do whatever you want to do. It's your tray. Make it for your decor. Whatever fits your style. I am also doing these clothespins in real time just so you can see how long it takes me. Okay, doesn't take that long, but what you have to watch out for is these little wonky ones here. They want to kind of curve to the side, and that's where your hot glue would come in handy. Or you can just get them all straight and hot glue along the bottom edge when they're all done. Up to you. Okay. Try to get them in as straight as you can. And I mean, it's not going to be perfect, it's a natural product. So, This one has a little shorter edge on it. I think it just kind of adds to the rusticness if they're a little uneven, but I like things kind of rustic. Not everybody does. That's not everybody's style and that's okay. My next video is going to be another tiered tray made with these burner covers making a basket like this, but instead of using clothespins, I'll be using Jenga blocks. And I have another way I want to do to make that my own. 
and it is not going to have a center support. It will have a support between the two trays, but it's not going to be centered. I'm trying something new with this next one, but I thought this was just going to look so cute. Make sure on these little ones that you get the edge of the lip up into this little hole, right up to the edge, not past it. If you get it up in here, you're going to have a different look than if it gets just into the edge of the hole. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> they lean differently if you don't attach them all the same way. So make sure that decide which way you want them to attach and make them all the same so they line up. Okay. This one, there's a couple here that just want to keep going crazy. Now most of the time when people make these trays, they make the top and the bottom the same, both with large uh, clothespins, which is totally fine. It would just make your top one a little taller. I just don't have enough clothespins and I'm unable to go to the store and get more. And I'm afraid if I order them from Amazon that they will come and be different because I've had several other packages of clothespins that weren't from the Dollar Tree and they were just a, a different size. I guess you could stagger them around <laughs> and have tall, short, tall, short, make it look like a rickety fence. That might be kind of fun, but I think I just want to do it this way. about my doggles. They like to be noisy sometimes. I think my being home has confused them. I didn't go to work and they don't understand why. dry fit this. I didn't need as, as many. So I said that we needed 74, but you're actually going to need 75. I guess I didn't have them as tight together on my dry run as I did on this one. All right. So there's that. Let's see if we can get a better view of it here. Sometimes it's really hard to... Okay, so I've got a short basket on top and a taller basket on the bottom. And then this can get all decorated up. Now I have one more thing I want to do. I'm going to pause and find what I need. So I have a spool of this farmhouse ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And it's got little cows and barns and things on it. And I'm going to glue it around where the metal piece is here. Now it is a little bit slanted, so I'm going to have to deal with that. I'm going to put it up here on a pedestal so it's not so low to the table, so I have a little better working space. So you are seeing right now the bottom basket. Okay. And I'm going to glue this around here and I'm probably going to have to do a few little tucks along the way because um, it's not exactly straight up and down. So I'm going to do a little glue on four or five clips at a time and I'm just going to glue this around. A little bit because of the fact that this isn't a straight up and down side. Um, 
So I'm just going to glue the middle first and then I'll go back where I need to and glue down the little puckery spots. I want to show you right here, I folded under the raw edge before I glued it down so that it wouldn't um, be raveling on me. And now if you look here, I've got some wrinkly spots that are poking their way up. So I'm just going to stick my glue gun up under there, dab on a little glue, and just kind of try to spread it out as best I can. Now there's going to be some wrinkles. That's just, ouch, just going to be the way it is because of the nature of it. If I had some stretchy ribbon, that would work, but I'm kind of just tucking the the bumpy parts into the middle in between a couple of clothespins. That seems to be helping. Tuck that ribbon kind of down into the hole, and that seems to be working. Okay, so then if you want to put a bow on it, you can, but I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And if I put a bow on it, I would put the bow on the top. So same thing, just going to put some glue along, oops, sorry, it's really hard to keep the gluey side to camera. <laughs> running the glue where the metal part is on the clothespins and just kind of tuck where you get a bubble just try to tuck it down inside and while the glue is fresh it seems to work better to do your little tuck with your fingernail instead of going back and trying to put more in it I'm going to let the glue that I've worked with for a minute I have a chance to kind of solidify before I go any farther because tucking it in seems to be pulling it out where I've already tucked it in. So I'm going to let it harden up for a minute. Okay, that seems to be helping to let it harden up a, a minute before I put on the next stretch of ribbon. Let's see how it's looking. It's not perfectly straight, but it's okay. And I wanted that farmhouse look, so... Um, it's all good. So I'm just going to finish. Just keep tucking a little glue in where the ribbon is puckering and tuck that ribbon down in between the clothespins and it'll look just fine. And then I'm going to cut my end of my ribbon just a little bit longer than it needs to be. And I'm going to put a little dot of glue at the raw edge and I'm going to fold that raw edge over. And then put some glue in there and tack that end down. Okay, if you wanted to put a bow then I would put it on the top. I think that it would look better so that this, the tails could hang down, but I don't think I want to put a bow on there. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I still have plenty of ribbon left on this spool, and I think that just gives it a little farmhouse touch and just kind of finishes it off. Okay, so this tray is done. All right, there you have it, my two-tiered tray Easter basket style for my Easter collection to be displayed in. Let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow. And let me know, will you be trying to make this? It doesn't cost that much. I think it costs about $6. Anyway, let me know what you're thinking. Would you leave it black and natural? Would you paint it a different color? Uh, what are you going to do with yours? All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.